All right, everyone. What if I told you I didn't sweat a drop while making the images that you have just seen? So the subject of this video is creating more authentic images by using ChatGPT for mid-journey. You know, some people say that you have to be really rigorous about prompting to get some really cool images. Whereas some people say, you know, it can be really simple. You can just put two words and get some interesting images. So we will check whether or not that is true. Actually, if you go to Mid Journey, there is one challenge, one thread, which concentrates on just putting two words to get some interesting images. But we will go beyond that. So, but before that, let's look into the limitations of Mid Journey. What is the problem there and what we are trying to overcome? First of all, we all know that Midjourney has biases, and one of that is the color schema that appears when you make images without putting any prompt about the colors. You can see some discussions online, and that is true because if you put some prompts, whether you're making buildings, landscapes, cars, or microbiological entities, the colors, the color schema is always the same. Right, so that's the first limitation. Okay, let's move to the second one. This was introduced by version three as we got a really nice upscaler, right? So the algorithm started adding this intricate details into the images. Well, that's interesting, but at the same time, if you're not using any specific style, if you're not prompting about that, you end up getting similar kind of upscaling, similar kind of details, no matter what the content is, right? So that's another limitation about mid-journey. And the, and the third thing is, again, what I said at the beginning, right? Some people go really, really rigorous and, you know, they go and they, they write really long prompts and get some result and defend, say that, okay, you know, I manage this, this is uh, my success because, you know, I'm, I'm really, really careful about what I'm uh, putting into the system, uh, whereas some people say, hey, you don't have to go that, that, in, that much into the detail. And to be honest, I'm on the second side, right? So this is, here's an example that is trying to, um, you know, render an interior scene using Mid Journey. You would realize that the one on the left side is, you know, more specific. It's creating like white spaces, concentrating on the modern input uh, that we are trying to get in the modern space. But uh, if you look at the image quality, composition quality, and um, the effectiveness of the image, 200 words to 20 words is not making that much of a difference. All right, so, so then we will see if this prompt engineering is a real thing and we are gonna see how long uh, it is here to stay or if it's going to disappear really soon. I really like this meme which is saying, okay, prompt engineering is not a real job. And to the point of this presentation, actually, I think the prompt engineers who were employed roughly six months to a year now are already um, unemployed because of, or they will be because of ChatGPT, right? All the effort that you're putting into, you know, crafting those prompts is, mm, I always kept saying that there's always, always the, you know, a, a big portion of chance and, a big portion of the bias that you already have in the machine learning or the AI algorithm system, it's inherent to the system. You can't really change it, but you can't play around it. So that's what we're gonna see in this presentation. All right, so again, the goal here is how to come up with some original content without sweating about prompting in mid-journey. All right, the trick is this. Um, Midjourney is already using natural language processing, right? And the tricky word is the language word in the middle. What we usually do is, you know, in, in our daily language, and if you're a casual user of Midjourney, and if you're not going into that, that deep into, you know, like linguistics, and if unfortunately you're not reading much, uh, then your vocabulary volume is kind of like small, right? So here, as I was looking for, uh, you know, a way to describe this, I googled and I saw uh, this resource which is showing you the 28 boring words and what to use instead, right? So if you look at the very bottom right side, instead of smart, you can use sharp, witty, bright, brainy, brilliant, uh, wise, quick-witted, clever, intelligent, gifted, and so on and so forth, right? So, so the question is, once you start changing these words, 
uh, does mid journey really respond to that or not right so you have to experiment and see if that's the case but as you start kind of like searching you know these uncommon words which is the keyword in this presentation you start seeing this uh, you know these words uh, that you heard maybe a couple of times maybe you didn't know the meaning or that you've heard but never used or you have never heard of right so uh, you can see subservient is willing to do what other people want right so although like you're not kind of like uh, maybe interested in doing it so and so on and so forth so Okay, what is, the, what is the point here? Are we going to kind of like expand our vocabulary? How much time do we have to do that? Really, because AI is able to do everything for us and so on and so forth, right? Okay, so for these images that I showed at the beginning, actually, I used only three words, which you see on the screen. I'm not going to dare to pronounce them, to be honest, but I know the meanings of the words because I checked them. So the first word is a form of irony in which a person... Uh, feigns indifference to or pretends to refuse something he or she desires right so it's kind of like distancing yourself from something the second one is the occurrence and development of events by chance in a happy and beneficial way so some some spark something's happening the third word is the appearance of being true or real interesting so you put those things and then you get these images that's it just copy and paste the three words within and between and these are the outcomes. Okay, it's interesting, right? So imagine trying to prompt these out. You would spend a lot of time, um, you know, coming up with this thing so you don't have the mental image. But once you have those three words in place and you know the meanings, then you have a feeling about the thing. So it's interesting that the natural language is trying to capture our feelings into the word. So it's a way of coding. It's encoding our feelings into the words. And then Midjourney is decoding those feelings into images. So in this case, actually, it's really working because if you look at the three words, you don't know what's going to come out. But actually, the feeling is there. And this is nothing magical. It's nothing spiritual. It's just the fact that the feelings, the thoughts are somehow encoded in the words and the words are being decoded with by mid-journey again because, because it's about patterns, it's about, about patterns of meaning, language and images. All right, so we are done with that. Okay, so how to, how to then put ChatGPT chat uh, into use in that respect? Okay, this is how I started. I said, again, remember um, the, the keyword for this presentation was uncommon words so i was i was first googling it and then i went to back to chat gpt and i said okay write three word sentences that consists it should be uh consists of uh, uncommon adjectives so there's an adjective followed by uncommon names i said names here be careful about that followed by uncommon verbs so it's the adjective name something somebody or something and doing something right and then you see the three results i get and then i copy and paste them into mid journey this is why what you get at the end okay the first first group on the leftmost side is pretty interesting because it's giving a frog like thing and then it's giving a person and then you know two jar like things right and the second and third are more like portraits right so i didn't use portrait i didn't say anything but the trick here is that the second word Get Gertrude or Ignatius are probably me journey is taking them as names names of people well because I said names there all right then I said write 10 more people okay you know that in chat GPT the the chat chat GPT understand the the, the the context right so once you start a chat it's not resetting once you ask for something else right so I don't have to say write three word sentences 10 of them right so i don't have to say that i can just say you know like write 10 of them write 100 more and so on and so forth so it's going to be inexhaustible right so it can go uh but then i stepped back and i said okay i was making something wrong i don't want to say names i want to say nouns right so because i want to kind of like expand i want to i don't want mid journey to be stuck with portraits like people right so if you put names then it's going to understand that if i put uncommon adjectives, uncommon nouns, and un uncommon verbs, then I'm having a more vibrant, you know, let's say uh, an expansive, really kind of like and widening 
um, landscape. So if you look in the middle, you see the cantaloupe there, right? So it's a fruit and it's going crazy because, you know, it's using these two uncommon verbs and adjectives to, to describe the cantaloupe. All right, let's keep going. And I say, write five more. All right, here you go. You know, you see that the first one and the second one and the third one. So out of the five, I'm just using these three examples here. Uh, and then, you know, you start getting, you start understanding what this thing is really doing with those words. All right. So then I say, write five more, each followed by a photographic style description. All right, here we go. You know, they have prompt engineering. Yeah, ah, we are at it. So it's, it's again saying, all right, fanciful. Uh, okay, so that's the first one. I'm sorry, I started with the second one. Pernicius uh, capillopod, which is the octopus there. We see macabre, which is the, you know, kind of like giving this ornamental style. And then it says grim, dark and eerie, right? So you see the lighting, you see the uh, photographic style uh, description. And in the middle, you see the um, third prompt. And on the right side, you see the fourth prompt. So you can kind of like go and look into that. So, um, and in the third one, if you look at the photographic style description, it says, um, uh, which is the number four on the right side, uh, it says unreal, fantastical, illusory, and then you start seeing those elements kind of like appearing uh, in the photographic composition. All right, great, let's keep going. So, how could you really use this? So you can say, you can argue, okay, I have no idea about what words I'm using. I don't know what they mean, what they do. Well, that's the point, right? So as you generate these words, well, you learn about them. That's the great thing about it. And then, then you can bring those ideas back into your own exploration, your own art, your own design, and so on and so forth. So for me, um, I do usually three things. Uh, well, very heavy on architectural styles, architectural tectonics, uh, and with that, tectonic forms. And I end up doing portraits, you know, using Mid Journey, but again, blending these two ideas with the portraits uh, as much as I can. Beyond that, you know, there are kind of like other things that I do on the side, but again, uh, you know, I just want to show how you can concentrate your interest. Uh, into one focal point and use this technique for your own um, explorations in, in mid-journey. All right, so here the next step, the, the gray area you see in the, in the top here is the, is the stuff that you already explored. And then I say, okay, add the word architecture as the fifth word in every sentence. So what I'm ex expecting it to do is, um, actually I should have said like fourth to begin with because it's like, the, the, the three words, uncommon words, and then, you know, is the fifth uh, at, the, at the architecture uh, and put a comma after it and then uh, and so on and so forth because I'm trying to remove um, the, the quotation marks and so on and so forth. So this is here, ChatGPT is a little confused and I'm not really clear about my instructions. Uh, so what's happening is, you know, it puts a comma after the first three words keeps the, you know, the quotation marks because I say keep the quotes, right? So I should have said maybe keep the sentence or letters uh, or, you know, uh, w the words, which I'm going to show in a second and then puts architecture at the end. All right. So this didn't really did what I was trying to do. So I was like, okay, this is not really working. So then I try again, write sentences. Well, that start with, it should be start. Sorry for the typo there with uncommon adjectives, followed by uncommon nouns, followed by uncommon verbs, followed by the word tectonics, followed by a photographic style description, followed by a color palette. Okay, so I'm really pushing and I'm, I'm going into prompt engineering thing without myself doing it, right? So I'm kind of trying to put, again, chat GPT into use in that. So eventually, once I do that, I get five prompts this time and I put the three of them into use and you finally start seeing architecture happening here, right? And if we look into the one in the middle, you're going to see that that octopus macabre, you know, thing is coming out with some sort of um, monochromatic, you know, color schema because that's the photographic style that ChatGPT introduced. But the goal of bringing that crazy ideas into architecture uh, pretty much started working and same thing goes for this one which is you know bringing back the uh, let me see in number four 
a key a keynote derm you know into into architecture with vibrant colors and so on and so forth all right so um, then I really want to get a little more rigorous with my prompts I want them to be clean and I want to have more control over it because I don't want you know mid journey to do something like weird that I'm not intending to do and I say rewrite okay so this is the again the continuation in chat GPT rewrite all sentences in this format start with words architectural rendering off tectonics off and then oncoming adjectives nouns and verbs as you said and then add the you know the color and lighting style and so on and so forth and again I get five of those all right if you look at that you're going to realize again I have the uh, quotation marks which I which I don't want to have for sure and then the next one I say keep all the words but remove all quotation marks so that's what I should have said uh, in the previous example too so finally I have everything as I was planning I have all the uncommon words verbs and adjectives that I you know didn't know about before using this and then again the architectural style appears okay wonderful it's getting better every time I try it and again I'm I'm not sweating as much uh, compared to you know if I were trying to kind of like prompt this uh, that would be very very hard the second thing very important is this though I wouldn't have thought about these things I wouldn't have thought about these things because they are not necessarily in my interest to kind of like you know blend this um, um, you know dom structure dome structure that has some you know uh, iconic pillars which also has some you know uh, octopi arms you know so that that wouldn't come into my mind so that's the richness of combining these two systems and pushing it forward and then again this is exactly what I was talking about it, it's stunning it looks like a little model it, look like, it looks like a building it's inspired there are like rubbles everywhere so and it's also kind of you know um, unrealistic in, in a way because you have floating objects and stones and so on and so forth so very very powerful but you can also get some you know mild versions of this thing too looking depending on um, you know what the prompt is really doing for you so obviously out of three words you have something about buildings here already so it's not trying to go out of uh, the, the, the you know the conventional understanding of buildings we have and uh, still though the you know the composition the lighting and so on and so forth is pretty pretty convincing and it's different than the 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 the, the, the default uh, color schema of mid journey uh, and then you know towards the end you start getting the, the the fourth one is getting better every time I try it and it's getting more stunning it's getting more uh, unexpected uh, as we move forward and here is an upscaled version of this and that was one that I kind of like didn't show in the previous examples but that was this kind of like insect like creatures uh, and they were fine at the beginning but it, again like as I got towards the end I, if, as I put tectonics as I put you know architecture I started getting these really really interesting results and again here is an upscale version of that that's it so what you do is you go to chat GPT you say give me some uncommon words verbs nouns adjectives whatever you would like to say and you just kind of like carry that idea back to mid journey but the trick is again bringing it all back to your own interest for my case it was architecture and tectonics I don't know for your case what it is but try this and let me know how it goes and please please support the channel if you like this content I'll see you in the next one thanks